We were recently invited to a mobility experience hosted by Bosch at their Flat Rock Proving Grounds, which worked out well because as some of you may know, I recently moved to Detroit to start a new company called Bloom, supporting the physical back-end operations of hardware companies with a focus on light electric vehicles. Bosch has been at the forefront of developing advanced safety features for vehicles for a long time now, and it's exciting to take a look at some of these features through a lens of broader mobility since I've been working on a lot of new and exciting vehicles lately with Bloom. This event was to showcase some of their newest mobility innovations to press and their key OEM customers. They had loads of innovation from anti-lock braking and e-bikes, vehicle stability control, brake by wire systems, and some really interesting stuff for off-road vehicles. But I was thinking more and more about how these technologies overlap with e-bikes and other light electric vehicles. Many technologies are initially developed for vehicles and then eventually cross over into the e-bike space. One of the best examples of this is their ABS system, which has already started making e-bikes safer by preventing wheel lockups and helping riders stay in control. Many might not know that ABS actually originated in the aviation space and was eventually adapted to cars, trucks, motorcycles, and now bikes. Many people might think, do we really need this technology on bikes? But the reality is, there's so many reasons why implementing this technology into the e-bike space can and will be beneficial for the higher adoption of these vehicles, especially in places like the US. But this is just the beginning. We'll get more into this later. Most vehicles on the road today have some technology made by Bosch, and it was really interesting to get to see the future tech we will likely see implemented. I also like to think about how this tech might be adapted to smaller format vehicles like e-bikes, motorcycles, and more. One of the first demos was their trailering technology. The first trailer technology we checked out was already in production. You just tap the angle in which you want to position the trailer, and your car will auto adjust and steer in that direction. I could definitely see how this can come in handy. So let's kind of like dynamically steer it. If you're, you know, if you're off a little bit first, that's okay. Perfectly launched that jet ski. <laughs> in the water. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's pretty cool. Then there's their new anywhere parking trailer. If you ever struggle with maneuvering a trailer in the past, or if you don't have experience, I think you'd really appreciate this. This one kind of takes away the, the guesswork. Instead of being able to select a maneuver or an angle, you're actually able to select a parking spot. You're able to drag and drop it around the screen. And then on the other screen, you see a, a kind of zoomed in view, which allows the user to get a really good view and select exactly where they want to put the trailer. With just a push of a button, you can see the steering wheel start to move already and the vehicle will automatically park in the spots. All I have to do is just maintain a safe speed and make sure I'm not going to hit anything and the vehicle will do the rest. And I'll come to a nice stop and we're there. And it doesn't require any technology on the actual trailer. Correct, yeah. So there's nothing on the trailer and it's only using the normal backup camera and the like ECU that runs the parking features anyway. So it's it's like current gen technology with next gen software. You think you would feel comfortable to do that <laughs> maneuver? Yeah. Seems like you just you could press operate the your uh, camera, you should be able to operate right. the trailer, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm not sure we'll see this adapted to e-bikes anytime soon, but it was cool nonetheless. This technology really takes away much of the barriers that come along with getting into trailering, making so much more possible for the average person, even if you don't have any experience. Next, we got a chance to check out the e-bike ABS on their demo course. I don't have ABS on my current bike as it wasn't available when I got it, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna opt for it when I upgrade my cargo bike. Let me try this thing out. That one's a large, I can pull out Yeah, no, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a large. Are you? I'm a big head. Something's in there. I don't know what it is, but. Today, what we wanted to let you demonstrate is the anti-lock braking that Bosch has obviously been a pioneer in, has been putting on cars for many years. I mean, ABS has been mandatory on cars for something like 15 years. Pretty amazing that it's mandatory. And here we are just getting started with this type of safety solution for biking. It functions very similarly to what Bosch has on motorcycles. It helps to regulate that front wheel as you brake. Even if you accidentally only grab one brake lever, it will take that into account and will stabilize the braking experience, making sure that that rear tire does not lift and you then don't go over the handlebars. We want more everyday people to be riding. And so if you have these additional safety features, it can really help 
grow confidence on the bike for people as more and more people ride. I'm gonna test out ABS on this cargo bike with Tara in the front. So this is a pretty, pretty sweet spot. First, we gotta get up this big hill. Fortunately, I got some assist in doing so. We're going down 10% grade. What is this? This is just bumps. Uh, there we go. What? I think I think we activated it. All right, here we go. Ready? Let's not fall. Don't drop the camera. Can't get it to skid like on the the front. It does tell me that it braked and it it activated. Just kind of cool. I think I gotta upgrade my bike. All right, pretty sweet. Definitely interesting, but it's kind of cool on the display. You could actually like see, it's like telling you your brake distance, how much it's braking. I think you get even more statistics on like how well it's braking. That's super slick right there and it works really well. Even as an experienced rider, I can see the benefits as poor braking can be a common cause of crashes. I wonder what you think. Generally, I think the more safe we can make bikes, the more people will ride. Just to be clear, I'm well aware of the greater hazards riding a bike or mixing with automobiles, but I think it can't hurt to have a multidisciplinary approach. The ABS technology is pretty advanced and they have different ABS modes for whatever use scenario you choose. ABS cargo, touring, all road and trail. When I first learned about the Bosch ABS system, I was surprised to hear about the application for performance in trail riding. Speaking with more experienced mountain bike riders, they spoke very highly of it. I haven't gotten a chance to try it on a trail, but I look forward to that. One interesting stat provided is that up to 29% of e-bike crashes could be prevented each year if e-bikes were equipped with ABS. We saw another technology which I think could be interesting to adapt to other vehicles like electric bikes and motorcycles. Brake by wire. Now this is an automotive application, but pretty quickly I can think how it could benefit other vehicles. Everything from improving brake feel, reaction time, more modular control over the actuation, and perhaps even different designs and how brakes are actually activated. You know, in theory, even something like this, a brake by wire system, right, could be certainly applied to electric bicycles, mm -hmm. other sort of formats. So well, we've you know, seen shift by wire, right? Shift so. by wire, yep. Very small applications of a steer by wire system, actually. It's like pretty interesting. Making the product easier to use for more folks, right? So. Brake input now becomes basically an electric signal, right? We yep. have sensors, we sense what you're doing and we can then convert those signals into a driver brake request right. that we execute with the brake system. And of course we can adjust it. So now we'll just go in the center lane and we'll go clockwise. And so you can, you can bring the car up to like 50 miles an hour if you're comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, you don't have that like pedal depression like all the way to the, to the you know, or closer to the floor. More, more immediate feedback. Yep. And a lot more control over that. Yeah, I feel it's a little bit a little bit softer, right? Mm -hmm. On that a little, late, little later effort. Technically improves safety because the reaction is faster, right? If, you know, you no longer have the the physical motion of your foot. Right. You, know, you just basically touch it, and it's you know, and it's there. So yeah. it's like, okay, I know you want to break. Where, in theory, you have whatever you know microseconds to kind of get to that point where it's like actually you're telling me you want to break right now. I mean, even I think about that sometimes on like bikes, the way you're setting them up and like how the lever is and, and how reactive it is. We spoke with Rich about the introduction of ABS by Bosch and all of the technology that followed and how it's all become an ecosystem that's created safety in vehicles. How it just makes sense to add as much safety as possible. If you go back to 1978, Bosch introduced the first, let's say, automotive ABS system. Following ABS, it was traction control and then it's been ESP or electronic stability program. This is your typical ABS traction, again, vehicle dynamics controller all baked into the one box. Because that's just something even we see like electronic controlled suspension and how these things fit into this like bigger ecosystem of, of parts that make up either a, any type of vehicle, right? You no, know, we showcase today our brake control pad, which is basically a zero travel force-based instead yeah. of 
you know, you're travel based, but you can also imagine that it doesn't have to be even that, like whether it's for a, a different mobility or biking or whatever, it can be different human machine interface interfaces, yeah. essentially baked down to an electronic command, a reading, an understanding of what the driver is asking for, and then ex executed by the by wire actuator. Of course, today we demonstrated in an automotive application, but like you discussed the ABS, right? Of course, ABS started in an automotive application yeah. and then progressed through the different automotive segments and now today went to the motorcycles and then now is even in the e-bikes segment. So, yeah. you know, this technology has a tendency to, you know, expand and grow. What we call a lot in the e-bike industry is like bringing that like automotive quality to, to this sector because historically we've come from the bike side and it's sport and it's a lot of built in your garage, whatever, just like kind of thrown it together sort of thing. And, but to, to elevate that safety level and, and really the redundancy in that like thought process. I mean, we have a long history of, you know, building very high quality products and bringing that same level of industrialization or manufacturing to the, like an e-bike segment. I think yeah. it's also very important to make sure that that, that quality is there to deliver for really what the customers expect. Can I ask, like, what is the spirit that kind of like drives this? I know like the Bosch tagline is like invented for life, but like, tell me like, what, what are the things that are like driving you? You know, I have a little bit of a personal story back in high school, you know, before the advent of ESP really, I actually lost a, lost a friend yeah. um, in a car accident. And, you know, looking back, of course, you just think, wow, you know, maybe something like an ESP system could really have prevented that. Right. You know, that's just my own story, but I think everybody has their story around, you know, how this technology could really benefit, you know, whether it's really just, you know, adding comfort, a feature right. function, or really delivering on safety, or maybe even just delivering on fun. I mean, yeah. some of these things that we have invented, uh, you know, make a car go faster around a racetrack, or, um, you know, maybe make mobility more accessible, or, you know, again, add safety to even an e-bike system. Yeah. Our last demo was modular braking for off-road vehicles. It combines Bosch's newest generation electronic stability program with decoupled power brakes. It auto detects the surface types and changes the ride dynamics accordingly. Typically, we're taught that in off-road driving, you want to drive with uh, two feet, using the gas and try and keep kind of some engine power going and modulate the brakes as you need to get over any obstacles that you need. If you're new to buying an off-road vehicle like this truck, it can be very intimidating. Our target speed is one kilometer an hour. If I take my foot off the brake right here, we'll take off and we'll just get this very slow, nice creeping speed. Again, my feet have not touched the pedals at all. I am completely wow. feet off the gas and brake here. And as we hit these rocks, you'll see kind of the engine torque kind of go up and down as we command more torque to get over any obstacles that are blocking us. And I can focus on just where am I trying to drive? I don't have to be doing this two foot thing right, right. trying to get up the hill. Safe way to control it, nice and smooth control all the way down the hill. You can feel it's not like jerking or bucking or anything. We get like a really nice smooth control all the way down that hill. Second obstacle that we have today, so this is our rock course. We call it automatic surface detection. So the ideal wheel behavior and acceleration behavior can be very different in different surfaces. I have a rock lane ahead of me. We can determine what kind of a surface we're on. And then based on that surface detection, we will apply the appropriate countermeasure so that we can get through that surface the most efficient way possible. You can start to see how we could possibly use this electronic suspension and braking on a mountain bike. All right, so we did detect rock here now that we've actually gotten into the rock surface. We will now stay in this rock mode until we exit the rock surface. I could see really improved control brought to the bike this way. Granted, it would come with some added complexity, but I personally think I would enjoy a bike with this tech. What do you guys think? And now that we're off the surface, it's already detected that we are no longer on rocks. Wow. This event really made me think more about the future of vehicles and the technologies which make them work. We started with the bicycle, and in many ways we're going back to the bicycle, or somewhere in between. The first cars were essentially four-wheeled bikes, and as we look to the future, we're seeing more choices in how we move. What's clear is that technology like what Bosch is introducing is going to play a major role in shaping that future, making mobility safer and smarter for everyone. And all this technology is just the beginning. We expect to see these vehicle innovations come into the e-bike and light electric vehicle space in more ways and perhaps some of the new types of vehicles that we haven't seen before. With this technology, e-bikes can become more approachable for everyone, whether it's helping people balance better or offering more confidence on the road. How do you feel about this new technology gaining traction in this space? What would you like to see in the future? 
I, for one, am excited to see the continued development and adoption of technologies which improve the safety of transportation, and I feel fortunate to be helping to shape the future of this industry.